is Odoyebe Beatrice. I'm welcoming you to Business Studies class. Today, we shall be discussing the topic trade. And I want to believe that as you are all at home, observing the stay-at-home order, your parents must have sent some of you even to get some needs of the family. And in the course of you doing that, you must have been given some amount of money that you are going to exchange the items needed with. That is to introduce to you the topic for today, which again is trade. I want to believe you all know what trade is. I believe, as I'm saying it, some of you have started saying it is the buy and selling. We are going to focus our attention on one, the definition of trade, two, the importance of trade, and lastly, we shall be discussing the forms of trade. Now, I want to believe you all know what trade is. I want to believe you know what trade is. We know that trade has to do with buying and selling of goods and services. That's a common one that we all know. But I want to tell you today that trade is the branch of commerce that deals with the exchange of goods and services for money or credit. I take it again. Trade is the branch of commerce that deals with the exchange of goods and services for money or credit. What do I mean by that? The first point in that definition is that trade is a branch of commerce. And I believe that your teachers must have done justice to the meaning of commerce when you were in school. We all know that commerce is an aspect of business studies. And commerce has to do with buying, selling, and distribution of goods and services. So from that meaning of commerce, we can see that trade is a branch of commerce because trade has to do with buying and selling. Still in that definition, I said trade is the exchange of goods and services. You need a particular item or you need a particular service to be rendered to you, but you have the money. Now you can exchange your money for that particular good, good or service. So trade is the exchange of goods and services. And please take note of that point, that trade is not only about exchanging goods. It also has to do with exchange of service. Now, what do you exchange goods or service for? You exchange it for money or credit. Either you go to where you want to buy goods with money and you collect goods, you give the seller money. Or at times you may be out of cash. You don't have money with you. That means you are buying or you are exchanging the goods or service for credit with the promise to pay later. So that is the meaning of trade. I want us to look at this picture together. I want us to look at this picture together. Looking at this picture, we can see some women displaying goods on their heads, while there are some of them displaying goods on the floor. And you can also see some people trying to buy goods trying to exchange goods for money. So this picture shows trade. I would like to tell you this about trade, that trade has been in existence even from the time of the Bible. No wonder Jesus Christ, when he entered the temple, he sent some people away from the temple. Why? Because they were buying and selling. So that's to tell us that trade has been existing since. But the reason for Jesus sending them away from the temple is just that that is not the right place. And looking at this picture, we can see 
that buying and selling exchange of goods for money or credit is taking place at the right place. And the right place for exchange of goods and service for money or credit is the market. It is the market. We continue with our lesson and we quickly move on to importance of trade. Importance of trade. One of the importance of trade is that it makes it possible for individuals and countries to have and enjoy what they cannot produce and sell what they have in excess. For example, I am an individual, a teacher by profession. I cannot produce clothes. I cannot produce shoes but I can have them and enjoy them when I exchange my money for those clothes and shoes and so many other things like that. Also, I am a teacher, like I've said. I have knowledge of business studies. I have it in excess, in quotes, and so I can exchange it for money. That's what I have in excess that can be exchanged for money. That's one individual. Even for countries, Nigeria, for example, has agricultural products in excess, and they can exchange it for money by selling it to other countries. But Nigeria, also as a country, cannot produce, for example, electronics. But we can have it in Nigeria, and we enjoy it when we exchange it for money. So that's one of the importance of trade. I don't know if any one of you can even think of any other importance of trade as you are seated at home watching me. Now, another importance of trade is that it helps in satisfying human wants. Like I said, when I was explaining the first point, there are many things I need. There are many things I want, but I cannot produce them. But when I have my money, I can exchange them for those things that I need and thereby satisfy my wants and my needs. So trade helps us to satisfy our wants and needs. Another importance of trade is that it improves people's standard of living. Trade improves people's standard of living. When I need something, and as a result of trade, I'm able to get it. My standard of living improves. For example, if I have money, and I'm able to exchange it with Maybe, for example, washing machine. My standard of living improves, which means I will not, go, I will not need to go through the rigors of using my hand to wash. The washing machine does that for me. There are many, many other examples we can give. So trade improves people's standard of living. And another one is that it leads to international cooperation. When two countries of the world trade with each other, definitely there will be cooperation between them. So there will be cooperation between or among countries of the world who are involved in trading activities. And once that happens, we see that there will be peace all over the world. So trade leads to international cooperation. There is still another, ex an another importance of trade, and that is it creates job opportunities. There are many of your parents who are traders. Some of them sell petty things. Some of them, they are into wholesale trade. Either wholesale or petty trade, they are traders, and that is what they do for a living. So 
they are able to get job as a result of trade. They are not wandering about the street looking for something to do for a living. So trade creates job opportunities. And lastly, on importance of a trade, we are going to look at this point. Trade leads to economic development. If I should ask you, as you are seated at home, that you should mention a state in Nigeria that is economically developed, I know majority of you will mention Lagos State. And that is very true. Lagos State is economically developed just because of a lot of trading activities that go on in Lagos State on a daily basis. So Lagos State is very rich, and that's, that, that's why you see many people from villages all over this country trying to come there to stay, to live, because of the economic development. So, so far so good. We have discussed the meaning of trade. We have also discussed the importance of trade. Now we move on to the last aspect of the topic for today, and that is forms of trade. Forms of trade. How many forms of trade do we have? We have majorly two forms of trade, and the two forms of trade are home trade and foreign trade. When we say home, what do we mean? It has to do with our environment, where we live. So home trade is the buying and selling of goods and services within a particular country. For example, in Nigeria, or your state may trade with Delta states, or your state may decide to sell maybe cocoa to Delta states. And Delta states in return may decide to sell crude oil to or your state. So that is an example of home trade. Home trade, once again, is the buying and selling of goods and services within a country. Home trade can also be called domestic or internal trade. Domestic or internal trade. You can remember when you were in primary school, your teachers must have taught you domestic animals. Domestic animals mean animals that live within your house, within you, around you, within your environment. So that's the same meaning that we can give to domestic trade because it takes place within our country. And it is internal because it is not crossing the, the border of a particular country to another country. So that's the meaning of home trade. Home trade can be subdivided. Home trade can be subdivided into two. And these two are wholesale trade and retail trade wholesale trade and retail trade. What do we mean by wholesale trade? You might have been hearing of maybe your mothers going to buy some items for the family, and they tell you, oh, that woman over there is selling the wholesales. What does that mean? Wholesale trade is the act of buying goods in large quantities or in bulk from the producer and later selling it in small quantities to the retailer. I take it again. Wholesale trade is the act of buying goods in large quantities or in bulk from the producer or the manufacturer and later sell it in small quantities to the retailer. So people that are involved in wholesale trade are called wholesalers. They are called wholesalers. For example, if you are buying maybe 
a dozen of biscuits, then you are buying a wholesale trade. So the person that will sell that to you is the wholesaler, and his business is wholesale trade. Now, the other division of home trade, home trade is the retail trade, and that has to do with buying goods in small quantities from the wholesaler, and later sell in units or in bits to the final consumers. Retail trade is the act of buying goods in small quantities from the wholesaler and later sell in units or bits to the final consumers. And those people that are involved in that type of trade are called retailers. Retailers. So those people, they don't sell in dozen. They cannot sell in cartons. They cannot afford to sell in half cartons like the wholesalers we do. But they sell a sake of pure water, maybe just one biscuit, a loaf of bread, a box of matches, and so on. So that is about wholesale and retail trade. Like I said earlier on, some of your parents are wholesalers. Some of them are retailers, even if they are not. Some of you, you have some, maybe uh, men that are security men looking after your house, and you see them involving themselves in retail trade, selling petty, petty things. Now, the other, forms of, the other form of trade is foreign trade. It's the other form of trade. And the foreign trade is the buying and selling of goods and services between two or more countries. The buying and selling of goods and services between two or more countries. Now, the trading activity is going beyond a particular country now. It is no more within a country. Can you try to give me another name for foreign trade based on this simple explanation? That it goes beyond the boundary of a country. It can be called external. It can as well be called international. International trade. It is international because we said it involves two or more countries of the world. It is not just about a country. For example, China can sell electronics to Nigeria. For example, Germany, Brazil, and all other countries of the world can trade with Nigeria. And that is what we mean by foreign trade. Now, for, uh, uh, foreign trade can also be divided, but this time around it's not into two, but three. Can you guess? Oh, the first one, import. We have export, and we also have entry points. So the subdivisions of foreign trade are imports, exports, and entry ports. When we say imports, we refer to goods that are brought from other countries into our home country. Can you mention some examples of imported goods in Nigeria? I know some of you will be saying, Television, computer, some plates, even wristwatches. Many, many things that are imported into Nigeria. Equipment, machineries, we have a lot of them. Even there are some clothes that are imported even to our country. Now, the opposite of import is export, which means as we bring in some goods from other countries, some goods are also sent 
from our country to another country. And that is our exports. Nigerian exports, like I've said the other time, are mostly agricultural products. We sell agricultural products to other countries. And when we say entry ports, we mean goods that are imported from other countries, but they are now re-exported even to another country. Goods are brought from countries different from us, and we now re-export it again to another country. That is what we mean by entry port. Now, having looked at, uh, at this, I want us to draw a diagram together. I want us to draw a diagram, a diagram together to show the forms of trade. This is the diagram that shows the divisions of trade or the forms of trade. Trade being divided into home trade and foreign trade. Home trade being subdivided into wholesale trade and retail trade. And foreign trade into import, export, and entry port. By the grace of God, when we meet next time, we shall be discussing about aids to trade, which is the aspect of service of the meaning of trade I gave you the other time. But before we go, I'm giving you this assignment. Number one, you are to write three countries that Nigeria trades with. And the second assignment, you should list five aids to trade. Till we meet next time, thank you and God bless. viewers. Welcome to the class. My name is Elobike Charles. I'll be taking you on economics. And today's topic is an interesting topic, which is theory of production. Theory of production. So before we go into the class, I want you to look at your environment now. I want you to identify maybe four things that you think came out as a result of production four things you think that came out as a result of production. I know you have identified it now. Now the furniture you are sitting on now is as a result of production. The television set you are watching now is as a result of production. The fan in your living room is also as a result of production. There are other things I know you have identified, but all these things came out as a result of production. And that is what we'll be discussing today. Now, before we go into define production, in the story of creation, we are told that God created the heaven and the earth. God created the heaven and the earth. And that means, that implies that everything we'll be discussing today has its origin from God, has its origin from God. Now, I want to throw the first question to you. What is production? How can you define production? Now, production is defined as creation of goods and services and their final distribution and their distribution to the final consumers for the satisfaction of human wants. Creation of goods and services 
and their distribution to the final consumers for the satisfaction of human wants. So there are three key things we will pick from this definition. And what is the first key thing? Creation of goods and services. Creation of goods and services. The second thing we are going to pick is distribution to the final consumers. And the last thing we are going to pick from the definition of satisfaction Satisfaction of human wants. What does it mean? It means that when we create goods and service, when we bring goods and service into existence, we have to take it to the final consumers. And we cannot, it cannot get to the final consumers if they cannot get satisfaction from it. And that means that whatever we are creating, whatever we are bringing into existence, whether it is goods, whether it is services, we must make sure it is something that can satisfy the needs of the consumers at that time because production is not complete until the goods get to the final consumer. So if you have produced something and there's nobody to buy it and there's nobody to use it, production is not complete. It is complete when the goods get to the final consumer. So the next question I want to ask you is, what are the major types of production? What are the major types of production? So the first one is direct production, and the second one is indirect production. Direct production and indirect production. So what is direct production? What is direct production? So direct production is a type of production which an individual produces goods and services only for family use and consumption. A type of production in which an individual produces goods and services only for family use and consumption. What do we mean by that? You are producing not for sale, but you are producing for your personal consumption or your family use. Example, your daddy or mommy might have a garden at the back of your compound. What do they use that garden for? They, they plant vegetable, and when they harvest it, they will take it to the kitchen and slice it and use it to prepare a soup. That is uh, direct production. There are other types of direct production. You might be good at a particular trade. Is that okay? You are not using it to, to make money, but you use it for family use. Maybe you have learned tailoring, how to sew clothes in the school. In, the, in, the, in your house there, yeah, your, your mommy can buy yards of clothes and you sew materials for your siblings. That is direct production. You are not sewing those materials for sale, but for family use. That is direct production. Now, the next thing is indirect production. What is indirect production? Indirect production is a type of production in which goods and services are produced in large scale mainly for sale. Goods and services are produced in large scale, mainly for sale or in exchange for other needs or in exchange for other needs. So when you are producing in large scale, we call it commercial agriculture. We call it commercial agriculture. You produce to sell, not for family use, not for your personal consumption. It is called indirect production. Now indirect production is subdivided into three major groups. Indirect production is subdivided into what? Three major groups. What are they? So indirect production is subdivided into three major groups. What are they? So the first one is primary production. Second one is secondary production. And the third one is tertiary production. So the first one is primary production. The second one is secondary production. And the third one is tertiary production. So what is primary production? Primary production is extraction of raw materials provided by nature. So it's concerned with obtaining raw materials in their natural form from land, air, or water. From land, air, or water, natural resources. Examples are raw materials 
from agriculture, raw materials from mining, raw materials from fishing. So there are two pictures on the, you can see there, the first one is a coal from mining, and the other one is fish from, from the river or through fishing. So these are raw materials provided by nature. So the next one is secondary production. Secondary production. So what is secondary production? What can we say that secondary production is? It involves transformation, conversion of raw materials, or semi-finished goods into finished goods. Transformation, conversion of what? Raw materials or semi-finished goods into finished goods. Manufacturing and construction firms are into secondary production. Manufacturing and construction firms are into secondary production. The pictures you are seeing, we have a brick wall, we have a brick, and we have a loaf of bread, a sliced loaf of bread. The brick there is a semi-finished goods used to construct what? The brick wall. So these are sec uh, secondary production. So the brick there you see is the semi-finished goods that was used to construct the brick wall. Then the last type of indirect production is tertiary production, tertiary production. So what is tertiary production? Consigned with provision of commercial and professional service. Consigned with what? Provision of what? Commercial and what? Professional services to the people. So when you provide commercial service or professional service to the people, you are under or you are engaged in indirect production. So the people involved in this aspect are wholesalers, they are retailers, they are lawyers, they are teachers, medical doctors, engineers, and so on and so forth. So we have three pictures there. The first one is a teacher is providing a professional service. Is providing a professional service. The next one is a lawyer is, is also providing a professional service. The next one there is a retailer is providing a commercial service because commerce involves buying and selling. So that is a, a tertiary production. So the next thing is factors of production. What is factors of production? Factors of production is defined as components or resources which are combined together to produce goods and services. Components or resources which are what? Combined together to produce goods and services. Now, before goods and services can be produced, this com component, this resources has to be combined together to enable production to take place. To enable production to what? Take place. So there are four of them. So we have four factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. Land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. Now what is land? Land is defined as a free gift of nature or a natural resources. A free gift of nature or a natural resources. Example is forest, mineral resources, rivers, ocean, and atmosphere. The reward is rent. The reward of land is what? Rent. So the fake picture you see there is timber from forest. Timber from forest. What do we use timber for? To produce furniture that you are sitting. The next one is coal from mining. It's a, a mineral resources given to us by nature. And the last one there, the last picture there is crude oil. Crude oil. The major resources of this country is that crude oil. So this is land. There are other types of land. as far as the things we can get from farming. The ones we can get from uh, uh, rivers and ocean. And even the atmosphere. The air we breathe is also what? Land. And it is, is, is also land. Now we move to the next one, which is what? Labor. So what is labor as a factor of production? So what is labor as a factor of production? Labor is defined as all forms of human effort put into or utilized in production. All forms of human effort put into or utilized in production. And this human effort can be mental and physical effort. It can be what? Mental and what? Physical effort. The reward for labor is wages and salaries. The reward for labor is what? Wages and salaries. I say it can be mental 
of physical effort. That brings us up to types of labor. We have three types of labor. The first one is on skilled labor. The second one is semi-skilled labor. And the third one is what? Skilled labor. It, on skilled labor is a labor that does not need training to do his job. It does not require training for the job he's doing. Examples are cleaners. Examples are messengers in the office. They don't require any special training for the job. What is semi-skilled level? Semi-skilled level requires just little training to do what he or she is doing. Example, you have learned a trade, a particular trade for a year or two, and you have started practicing that trade. You can be classified at a semi-skilled level. Now, what is skilled level? Skilled level is a level that requires a lot of training to do the job he or she is doing. Requires a lot of training. Maybe you have gone through primary school, through secondary school, you have gone through university and obtained a degree in a particular discipline. After that, you still went on to do a professional course in that discipline. So you can be called a skill level because you have acquired training for that job. Examples are uh, lawyers, examples are engineers, Examples are teachers and so on and so forth. So they use what you call mental effort. They use what you call what? Mental effort. So the next thing we want to discuss is capital. So what is capital? We say for capital is man-made assets used in production. Man-made assets used in production. Or refers to man-made wealth or, or goods used to produce other goods. Man-made assets used in production or man-made wealth used in produ in to produce other goods and services. What do we mean by that? Now, there are things that were made by men that are used to create wealth, that are used to produce other goods and services. And this is what we call capital. This is what we call capital. Example is the plant and machinery, is the tractor we are seeing on the screen now. These are made by man and it is used to produce other goods and services. Another example is the physical cash you are seeing also. This one is the most liquid type of capital. So it can be used to produce goods and services. That brings us to types of capital. Types of capital. We have fixed capital. We have uh, working capital, circulating capital. We have current capital. We have social capital. What is fixed capital? Fixed capital are types of capital that are not used up in production. Types of capital that are not what? Used up in capital. Although we are using it for production, but it is not used up. It's subject to what we call depreciation. Depreciation means that it will be reducing in value as we use it for production. So the next one is working capital or circulating capital. So what is working capital? Working capital or circulating capital is the capital that is used up in the process of production. Capital that is what? Used up in the process of production. A good example is the raw material that we use in the process of what? Production. When we use our raw materials in, the, uh, in production, it is used up, it will not remain. That is a working capital. So the next one is current capital or liquid capital. We call it current capital or liquid capital. What is current capital? So current capital is a capital used for day-to-day -day running of the business. Capital used for what? Day-to-day -day what? Running of the business. Example is the physical cash, and that is the most liquid type of capital we have. The last type of capital is social capital. So what is social capital? Social capital are assets, assets provided by the government to aid production. Assets provided by the government to aid what? Production. Examples are electricity that we use. It was provided by the government. Example is the road network. It was provided by the government. So this, this type of assets aid production. And we know that if there's no good electricity, production might not take place. If there are no good uh, network of road, goods getting to the final consumers might be difficult. So that is why they are part of a capital, and we call it social capital. The last part of factors of production we'll be discussing today is entrepreneur. 
entrepreneur. Who is an entrepreneur? Is defined as a factor of production that coordinates other factors of production in order to produce goods and services. A type of production that coordinates other factors of production in order to produce goods and services. The other factors of production cannot work in isolation. Somebody has to coordinate it and bring them together for production to take place. And we say that the reward for an entrepreneur is profit. So that is our lesson for today. So in this lesson, we were able to define production, we were able to uh, list and explain types of production, we were able to define factors of production, we were able to state the types of production. So at, I, as I come next time, I want you to remain in your house and remain safe. So I'm giving you an assignment you will do at home, remain safe and God bless you.